hear me? My name's Lillian, I'm a sophomore. I'm Kai, and I'm a senior, and we're from Abraham Lincoln High School. This poem is probably pertinent to all the poets in the room today because what is a poet without one perpetually absent parental figure? <laughs> the elusive father is something that many have foraged for but few have apprehended. As poets, we pour our heart out onto a page and speak our deepest truths on the stage. I've heard countless poems about broken relationships with fathers and the yearning to mend all open wounds, attempting to wipe the yellow pus off and sew together the sore without leaving battle scars. I have his thick thighs and his hazel eyes along with his tendency to be shy, and that's where the inheritance stops. And the little poet in my brain starts to stain its walls with words in an array of wonderful colors so I can distinguish between his small gifts to me and the gifts that I gave myself. When I looked into the mirror, all I saw was my mother, a square jaw and maybe one or two flaws, and tokens of appreciation and certificates of affection proved to be all around me. However, the inheritance from my father tends to gnaw and nibble at the worst times. Clunky and confusing, it muddles my musings, but my little poet won't waver, insisting to scribble one last clause. After all, what is a poet without their daddy issues? At the best times, I didn't have a dad, and neither did most of my friends. The ones who did seemed to rarely see them or were vaguely scary to elementary me. In my hippie elementary school, daddy-daughter dances were outlawed, and custodian and kid dances were much more common. And as time went on, I wondered why, why would anyone want a father? Most seemed rotten and should be treated with caution. That impulse has followed me for longer than I'd like to admit. My first inkling that something wasn't quite right was TV. Maybe some kids had a little less Walter White and a little more Tim Taylor, but even they were a little neurotic. Danny Turner had OCD, and when you Google him in real life, well, so was I really that wrong? In my all-female household, the phantom father was something I only saw at friends' houses. It looked like something akin to Bigfoot. More than double my height, hairy with a pot belly so protruding, I thought men were the ones who gave birth until the third grade. It, it was, was just, just as unsettling. unsettling. I've been told dads tend to spew passive philosophy or quick quips. That the smartest women get their tongues from their fathers. That the tougher a girl is, the more brother she has. But then what does that make me? No matter how old the saying is or how delusional you think I am, I refuse to say that my synapses have been snipped by a single parent household. That I've lost the precious teachings someone I don't even want want to speak to could give me. I refuse to say that my lack of a father made me a poet. Lord knows he didn't have a way with words. Having never sung a lullaby or lovingly lied to me, therefore nothing to pass down. I'm not subscribing to the superstition in this week's issue of what's wrong with you and your daddy issues. Despite it all, my little poet keeps growing. Because of you, mom. Because of you, mom. I, I don't, don't mourn the loss of what could have been. <laughs>